joining us for an evening time shop today in Rami Levy. This place is like the uh, main grocery store in Israel. Israel is famous for its fruit. So you can see we have oranges, grapefruit, all the things. And uh, this is shoe for sale in Jerusalem on Agron Street. We also do appliances. The other big Israeli grocery store is called Rami Levy. I'm not sure why I'm making videos of this because the truth is shopping in Israel isn't so different from shopping anywhere else except naturally the prices are in shekels and the writings in Hebrew uh, but you know after seven years I am accustomed to it uh, this place is really nice shoe for sale they even have a green section by which they mean like healthy products gluten-free products all that kind of stuff so if you go over here we can see they have the Shufrasol green range. This in Hebrew means uh, almond flour, uh, whole wheat pasta. So I, before I moved to Israel, I had this irrational fear that Israel was a backward country and you couldn't find stuff like whole wheat bread in it. And it proved to be completely unfounded. This in Hebrew up here, the low gluten means gluten free. And uh, they have here a whole range of gluten free products. So if you're a celiac or gluten intolerant and thinking about making aliyah, do not be stopped for this reason. They have it all. So it's really cool. Uh, I'm shopping here at night time. They have a whole cheese counter. Shopping in Israel is for sure expensive. Uh, this is the bread, bread counter. In general, everything you find in a supermarket is going to be kosher. And if you want to check the certification, you need to basically read the back of labels and you can see exactly what type of kosher it is this is like the kind of most standard bread that there is it's kosher parv so you know if you're not jewish you're not going to care about these things but if you are it's nice to have your needs catered to um so yeah this is i decided to make this movie or video here because it's relatively empty and uh Less people are going to be asking what the hell I'm doing with this video camera. Dairy is expensive in Israel. So food prices in Israel have been in the news repeatedly. And dairy is expensive because all the dairy has to be kosher. And that needs to be certified by the revenues. So the prices here, this is 13 shekels for 100 grams of cheese. You can work out the rate in dollars. It's going to naturally change uh, by the day. But it's all pretty expensive. Cheese here is pricey. Kosher meat compared to if you keep kosher, what it costs abroad is like not so expensive. But the rest of the stuff does tend to be expensive. Um, but most importantly, they have everything. Here is the plastic aisle. Now Israel is trying to phase out its use of single-use plastics by punitively taxing these. And I think it's a great idea. I'm not going to say... Too much about this but certain ah uh, this is already going to sound bad certain segments of the population here use these m much more than others and uh i think it's terrible that it's such a culturally accepted thing in israel so i'm glad they're phasing these out here we have some dried goods we have tomato products tomato paste um we have olives so shoe for sale online shopping by the way does exist in israel uh, this is shoe for sale, which as I mentioned at the start of this video is like kind of I guess you could call it uh, The main chain in Israel Rami Levy is second. So these These shops do deliver it. You can order your stuff online. They'll pick it deliver it You know, just like other countries uh, Rami Levy In Jerusalem, they don't do it in most other places they do and then there's a bunch of kind of second tier Supermarkets, but Rami Levy and shoe for sale would be the two main ones Here's the uh, oils. So my wife, Hannah, who made an appearance in the last video, has corrected me. She says, she affirms that the high price of dairy has nothing to do with the kosher stuff. Apparently it has to do instead with the uh, monopolies and the high price of imports. So anyway, uh, certain things you'll find in much more abundance in Israel, Israeli supermarkets than in other countries, such as tahina. Tahina is ground up sesame paste. So if you love tahina, I absolutely can't get enough of it then look at what an amazing situation we have. We have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. There's at least like, I don't know, 15 types here. You can get your tahina from whole sesame seeds. Uh, you can get your store brand tahina. So this is Shufrasal's own brand. It's becoming more of a thing in Israel, which is great because it's going to bring down prices. It's kind of own brand stuff. And then there's this other type as well. I'll show you the uh, hummus aisle uh, if I get time. Oh, you're going to go crazy because it's amazing. All right, enough of the introductions. Let's get to the important subject matter. So, all in Israel. Yes, it exists. It's not a uh, totalitarian Islamic state, fortunately. Um, certain things Israelis really go in for more than others. And I've never been exactly clear on why. For instance, case in point, Lashuf, I mentioned before when I was in, when I was in uh, the north of Israel. It's really big here and I'm not exactly sure why. They have this uh, strong kind of 8% stuff. Craft beer, there is craft beer, Israeli craft beer is a thing. And you can also buy non-Israeli craft beer. Lef, Blue Moon. So if you're a bit of a beer fan uh, looking to make Aliyah and you're worried about the availability of beer, then let me rest, put you assured. So there's also Israeli uh, craft beer. So this is Malka, which is uh, an Israeli craft beer. This is Negev, named after the Negev Desert, 4.7%. And the kind of two main beers in Israel would be two main local beers. Your kind of standard average beer is Maccabi. This is Maccabi here. They also make a strong product, 7.9%. And then you have a gold star and a few different types. Um, and you can get everything else. You have whiskey, martini. Let me show you stuff that's more unique to this part of the world. There's a big product here called Arak. Uh, popular Middle Eastern spirit and this is one of the main brands here. It's called Arik Ashkelon and uh, They have two types here, but you'll find more in some stores and really Israel is more of a wine Country than it is a beer country. I'm going through I was gonna say scrolling through going through the red wines here This is kind of your standard basic not so expensive wine. It's called Barkan and uh, they're selling bottles here for 28 shekels so like not crazy expensive that's the reds this is moving into the whites and there is a uh, rosé too so this is the alcohol aisle so perhaps if you're uh, thinking about moving to israel you're worried about the availability of alcohol uh, what can i say it is an abundance here um I'd love to see more Israeli craft beer. I think there's a lot of potential in the scene. I'd love to see Israeli craft cider. There is one that they don't stock here called Tamat Sa. But it would be cool to see others uh, joining as well. Moving into the meat section. Israel, here's a cool fact that you probably didn't know. I think, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments or I'll correct myself. I believe Israel is the world's number one per capita consumer of Turkey. And this is great for me because of the fact that I'm on a low fat diet after my gallbladder surgeries thing. So this is, where's the fat percentage on this? It's probably right in front of me and I'm just not seeing it. Uh, that's actually not super low fat. Anyway, um, so the great thing about living in Israel, if you keep kosher, is that by default, if you go to a kosher supermarket like Shufasal, the meat's going to be kosher. So again, you just kind of look around for the certification and it's going to be some type of kosher. This one here says kasher basari. So kosher is either meat kosher, dairy kosher, or parv kosher. Here we see more evidence of the proliferation of own brand goods in Israel. So this says shoe for sale, it's the name of the grocery store. This is their own line of sausages. Now, the burning question you're all wanting to know is, well, what does a hummus aisle look like in Israel? Um, I'm not sure anyone's done footage of this on YouTube, so let me show you guys. Starting left, moving right. Moving right, moving right, moving right, moving right. What do we have here? We have some home brand hummus and it's 14 shekels for one kg. That's about like, I don't know, I'm gonna say $4. And this is a whole aisle. So Israelis are really big into what they call uh, salatim. And that is kind of a category. I mean, it means salads literally in English, but you've got your tomato based products like matbucha. You've got your spicy products. And of course you've got your hummus. Hummus will come with either plain hummus or you'll get it with various toppings. So this says hummus in im harif. Harif is like spicy. Supermarket staff are kind of looking at me weirdly like, why is this guy filming random things of hummus? But it's totally okay. Uh, this one says hummus in im uh, pilpel. Uh, so this has got kind of like za'atar and some kind of a pilpel thing going on here. 
and this is hummus in tahina. So if you love hummus and you love tahina, you can combine your loves. They've got some tahina kind of like splattered on the top of the hummus. So unbelievable. So there is plenty of salatim and hummus here available. All right, let's talk a little bit about these. So dairy in Israel is expensive, as I mentioned previously. There's this thing here called bulgari, which literally means, that means in Hebrew, Bulgarian. And um, it's basically a white cheese. And you can see they have 5%, so that's pretty low in fat. So you'll find a lot of that. Apparently, Bulgarian cheese isn't like a thing in Bulgaria, I've been told. Uh, besides that, you'll have these kind of monopolistic brands of cheese. Uh, what else is big in Israel? Cottage cheese is really big here. It comes in various types of strengths. And there's one other great product if you are moving to Israel. They're big into feta cheese as well. Here you have feta cheese at different strength fat percentages. Um, one thing that's really big here is called labneh. I'm trying to find it on the shelf. I'm probably missing it. Uh, labneh, 5%. So this is basically strange yogurt. You put it through a yogurt strainer. If you are from a Middle Eastern country, you don't need to know what lab or you already know what labneh is. Uh, really good and you can find it quite commonly here as well as a di slightly different product called Gvina Levana. So I think where shopping in Israel gets really expensive is all this kind of your frozen meals. So it is, you, you are starting to find stuff like kind of pre-prepared calzones and pizza. But if you look at the prices, 17 shekels for like an own supermarket brand, you know, I'm sure pretty not special cheese pizza. That's like what, three, four dollars. Um, that's kind of typical. That is definitely expensive. Uh, so, but they do have this kind of, even the frozen section reflects the interesting uh, cuisines in Israel or the culinary influences like this uh, malawak and this uh, jaknun, which is like a Yemenite uh, bread. So these are available frozen and moving here into ice cream. Now, what's, what you're going to see is going to surprise you. Ben and Jerry's. Isn't Ben and Jerry's anti-Israel now? So from what I gather, Ben and Jerry's local subsidiary is like locally Israeli owned. So you'll still see Ben and Jerry's quite commonly because I guess um, there's lots of American expats here and they love Ben and Jerry's. They're not particularly keen on it either way, uh, but you'll still see it. And people are trying to separate their boycott of the parent company from uh, the local company. And most importantly, Netflix and Chilt is available here in Israel. So given the kind of people in Israel, the mixture of expats and Israelis, you can see there's a mixture of international brands like Cheerios, Nestle, Nesquik, and then all these kind of Israeli brands. So it's kind of like this across product categories. There's kind of uh, just different stuff here. And as I mentioned a few times already, you got your cornflakes, you got your Frosties. You still love these as a kid. Um, real mixture here of different products. If you're too lazy to cook home cooked food, then uh, fortunately you're covered on many fronts here, but particularly on the schnitzel front. So they have fish fingers, they have different types of schnitzel. And um, there is also Schufersal's growing range of own brand schnitzel. You have your uh, home schnitzel with the chip coating. You have your, uh, your other schnitzel. So great place for uh, schnitzel lovers here. And there's frozen vegetarian products too. Corn schnitzel, you can see here it says in Hebrew, schnitzel tiris. Uh, so if that's your, if you are a vegetarian or vegan, there are lots of products in Israeli supermarkets to keep you fed and nourished. Perhaps the most, uh, one of the most exciting culinary developments in the Israeli supermarket scene in recent years was the arrival of salt and vinegar crisps. Um, Elite's one of the big Israeli, whatever, monopoly, oligopoly things going on here. And they brought their salt and vinegar crisps to, mar crisps to market amongst great excitement among immigrants especially those of course from the uk and like me from ireland how are they is a the big question well they're actually pretty good i think they're a little bit too salty but uh they have changed my life in a positive way here we have the uh yogurt section lots of greek yogurts and uh for us lot fiends decent uh 0.9 percent yogurt there and uh there is as i said there's a very strong vegan tradition in israel so we have here both our regular dairy milks, including 1% skimmed milks, not here in Israel. But there is 3% milk, 1% milk. And you'll also find here uh, almond milk, soya milk, and uh, various dairy-free alternatives if you are vegan or uh, lactose intolerant or whatever. And these dangerously addictive uh, 
iced coffee things pre-made are here as well. Self-checkout came about last year, so it's now possible to check out your own goods here in the supermarkets. Handy barcodes and uh, pay for your goods that way. And then you can leave the supermarket with your, uh, with your shopping. So that's it. We've done our uh, grocery shopping. It's a Sunday here in Israel, so it's kind of like the first day of the week, which definitely takes a bit of getting used to. But now I'm nicely uh, stocked up on my uh, low-fat foods for the week now. Hope this was interesting. If you ever wondered what it's like to do your grocery shopping in Israel, well, I guess the answer is that it's not really very different from any other country. But it's fun in its own way. This was uh, Shufrasal, probably my favorite place to do groceries, but they're all kind of the same. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you want to like get more videos from me, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel.